Welcome to the Brookfield Agricultural Commission's April meeting. Um, tonight's speaker is Ron Starcher from Town Farm Gardens. Um, he and his wife Lori produce pickles, jams, jellies, and he is going to talk to us about what he's learned since last year's wonderful food safety preservation. So what have you learned, Ron? Uh, modestly little. <laughs> Well, the, the only thing that's changed since then is that there is a federal law now that every uh, facility that serves food to the public has to be registered with the FDA. Everyone. And it's really easy and they don't approve you or anything, they just want you to register. You can do it online. But so th would that include just... It, to serve food shop? to the public. So a farmer's market? Anytime. It's any processed food. So a farmer that's selling vegetables does not have to. Uh, but it, okay, but process, if you're processing process. the food so and I'm, selling it to the public. If I'm making muffins. If you're making muffins. Uh, if you, the FDA. FDA.gov. Click on food and then click on register food facility. Wow. So that is new. That's new. That's a, a new. It was enacted about uh, nine months ago. And just as an aside, if you have an acidified food facility like we do, do not register it because if there's two, that makes two facilities registered under my name and they will delete both of them. So I had to go back and re-register us as an acidified food facility. Okay, so there's a difference between just regular food and acidified food? Yes. If you have a, if you're going to be a if you had the old registration, a acidified food or a low acid canned food establishment, and you had to be registered prior to last year, do not register again. Okay, so that gets you. Am I right? And so what is an acidified food? Any food that is not less than a pH of 4.6 that you make less than a pH of 4.6 and can it. So you make it shelf stable. So did I just pick up three classifications then? You have acidified, you have low acid. Low acid canned yeah. food. And then I'd have just. There's regular, but regular. acidified and low acid are to the FDA are the same thing. It's a canned food. Right. It's acidified canned foods and low acid canned foods, are, they're lumped together. And, and the from, from your work last year, when, I, when I'm in this acidified region, I have to do a recipe, I have to have it verified, and quality control on a continuing basis. Yes. So that to get to that level, you have to be fairly sophisticated. Yes. And, and there's a course you have to take and pass. Okay. So that for, for us, farmers markets or whatever, if somebody's bringing along pickles, they have to have some proof of that uh, certification, qualification, or we could get ourselves in trouble. Yes. The yeah. local health department should be asking that question when they do, when they look Their at inspections. When they give, then they give a local health certificate at, at farmers markets. They typically do not, but they should be. Right. Okay. So you are more than a residential kitchen. You can't be a residential kitchen and do pickles. So what we have, can we, you do with a residential kitchen? You can do baked goods, less cream-filled things, and uh, jams and jellies. So cheesecake, uh, cream-filled donuts, things like that cannot be. Those are potentially hazardous foods. So if we wanted to set up a little niche in Brookfield where we have coffee and something, to, to again, we have no other than the, the small thing the Tip Top has for coffee and, and stuff, that if we were to set up something special where we would say that we would have coffee and muffins that are for local berries and all that kind of good stuff, we could do that, we could bake the, as long as it's not cream filled, if I got that right. No, you, you would probably be a commercial kitchen. You're talking about someplace oh. other than at a house? Well, okay, you know? so I was, I was kind of going two ways. Okay. I, bake, I could bake some uh, muffins at my house yes. and take them to a place and, and sell, sell them, them. Yes. and I'm, I'm good. Yes. 
second step if that place happened to be a, a kitchen that was certified inspected yep i could easily do those kinds of things in that and kitchen. more and and, and how, okay so how much more could i do uh restaurant stuff so i could actually do if you have a commercial stuff. kitchen you can do anything a restaurant could. that's what our but but yeah. what i couldn't do then is i couldn't move into doing pickles and, and those pickles kinds and of salsa things. and hot sauce and relish if i jump over that who, yes those are preserved to, goods yep because you have to have the fda thinks you have to have special knowledge in order to do shelf stable items wow so if you were going to sell macaroni and cheese almost everybody knows you can't put macaroni and cheese on a shelf for a month and then pull it off and eat it it's okay yep. okay but you're going to do that with pickles you're going to put them on a shelf for a year and then pull it off and you have to be sure that it's still going to be safe a year later all right next question barb you had something about lamb and mint jelly well a friend of mine has um a lamb business as well as her wool business and she grows a lot of mint and would like to make mint jelly to sell as an added product with the lamb would that be under a residential kitchen? Yes, you may okay. have a residential kitchen to do meat jelly. Okay. Which is easy. Residential kitchens are very, very easy. So how do you make mint jelly? Uh, it's just mint that she's grown and ground probably. No, you make tea with it first. You make oh, mint and tea then, okay. and then use the tea I don't know, to make I don't know. She uh, oh. has made it for herself and just would like to add it to, you know, the, the lamb. Business. So, Ron, if I were to want to set up a residential kitchen, mm -hmm. what steps would I need to take? Uh, call the local health department and tell them you want to be inspected to be a residential kitchen. There is no other requirement other than that. And then our local health inspector will come by and make sure that you meet the minimum standards for hygiene. There's no equipment requirements. There's no the gloves or anything like that. Not there's required. nothing. There is nothing. There's no training required. You don't need serve safe. You don't need anything. You just need to meet some minimum hygiene requirements. So, but then if I take that stuff into a place where I'm then going to sell, and I have open food and all that, then I've got to have my gloves and all. That. They, then, you, if you're going to. Now Give I'm it serving. to somebody. If you're serving somebody, yep. then you need serve safe. Yep. Oh, I need that, serve safe. And that's going to tell you. Then you're going to know, they're going to tell you all the other requirements for. <coughs> you don't really need gloves if you have other methods for not touching them with touching. your hands. Okay. Kind of thing. Okay. All right. Next question. Steve? <coughs> no, no questions. No question there. at this time. No. All right. He's thinking. Fl that. Flowers aren't. Uh, Contaminated or can't preserve them. <laughs> Rod, you mentioned serve safe a couple of times. What is serve safe? Serve safe is a uh, national standardized course for safe food handling practices. Uh, and then after it's done, you have to take a test and pass the test, and then you get a little certificate that every health department official in the world would want to see before they let you do anything in their town. And and where is serve safe something you can do online? You can do it online. Uh, you cannot take the test online. You have to have a proctor to take your test. Uh, I took mine at Bay Path. Uh, you can take it privately. There's a lot of people that give the classes privately. You don't even have to really take the test. You could take, buy the book and read the book as long as you pass the test. And is that something that has to be renewed annually? Five years. Does it have to be visible? What? The, your certificate once you pass the test? No. But if you were to go back to the idea of having a place where we'd serve coffee or anything like that, then we have to worry about the choking stuff and... If you have more than 25 seats, you have to have somebody that's trained in anti-choking things. Yep. There's also a suggestion that you have allergen awareness training for everything, everybody that touches food. Interesting. 
uh, that's online and it costs 10 bucks. Actually, you can watch it online and you don't get a certificate if you don't pay your 10 bucks. But, but they suggest that residential kitchen. So are like there that. any other certifications or those kinds of things, serve safe, allergens? That, that are required. Yeah. And then there's better process control if you want the uh, low acid and oh, acidified okay. food. Yep, okay, so process control. What do you mean by low acid? Uh, anything that's not acidified. You can can anything. Uh, the chicken that you get in a can, at a tuna fish, is not acidified. That has a pH of higher than 4.6. In order to make that safe for staying on a shelf for a year, you have to do significantly more to it to make sure that it's not that uh, micro, microbes are not growing in it. The way you, for acidified fruit, food, microbes typically do not grow in things less than acidity of 4.6. So that's why they make pickles. They put vinegar in it and they make the acidity pretty low and microbes don't grow in that environment. Not everybody wants acidified food. There's a lot of things you don't want to taste like vinegar. And those things are usually big companies because you got to cook them at, you know, 250 degrees for an hour. So those cans of tuna fish went through some oven that they were at 250 degrees for an hour to make sure everything was dead in it. That's the next question. So those are significantly more and, they, and you won't oh, yeah. see that except low acid canned foods. You probably won't see anybody except big guys doing because it's significantly difficult. So then stewed tomatoes, for example. A lot of tomatoes are low acid tomatoes. So does that get to the pickling level or is that something? It's a, it, it depends on the tomato. Okay. Most hybrid tomatoes nowadays are bred to be lower acid because they don't want to give people heartburn. So there's a lot of people that use their great grandmother's <coughs> tomato sauce recipe, make their tomato sauce, which is just, you know, tomatoes and onions and peppers and put it in a jar and do it. Back in grandma's day, tomatoes had acidity levels of around four. There's a lot of them today that are above five. 4.6 is the cutoff. So if you put peppers and onions, which are in the six range, in t tomatoes that are in the five range, and can it and put it on the shelf, uh, there is a possibility that you could get botulism because you didn't take care of it. Botulism will grow in that environment. All right. So that's why every batch of everything we make, except jelly, we have to measure the pH on. Right. And we have a log and you know we have so 50,000. Pardon? What do you make? Uh, like six kinds of pickles, four kinds of hot sauce, seven or eight kinds of relish. Uh, How many jellies? Seven kinds of uh, salsa. Like 25 jelly, but that's not a, that doesn't count. I don't have to measure anything for that. I have a question. How often are some of these certifications required to be re renewed? Uh, SurfSafe is every five years. The uh, better process control is not. It does not expire. They assume you're using it all the time. Uh, the allergen awareness uh, does not have an expiration date. Uh, the Kitchen certifications are require a an annual inspection and then one surprise inspection during the year. So we get seen twice a year, usually by two different agencies because we have a state wholesale food permit. So we see the state twice a year. We see our local health inspector twice a year. 
and we potentially could see the FDA at some point, but we're probably small potatoes for the FDA. So is there any changes over the last year? There's a lot of talk about regulation and increased regulation and what, have you seen increased regulation or confusion in regulations over the last year? Not for what I'm doing. Yeah. All right. The farm stuff, the uh, raw vegetable things is going to be problematic for some people. But and and by, by problematic, what do you mean by that? Uh, if you are, and I don't know what the threshold is now for the uh, agricultural practices laws, uh, there's uh, sanit hygiene of far of field workers. There's uh, testing of uh, the soil for E. coli. There's washing the vegetables before you sell them. Kinds of things that are requirements now. So, because you, there's a lot of people that eat vegetables from farmers markets that they don't do anything to them. They take them home and. Put them in their salad and eat them. And so, because you don't have that, those practices, they're backing back into the farm to assure that the farms. That, yes, because there have been outbreaks. I know you've seen them in the news of E. coli and things like that, that uh, from un raw vegetables. So there, are, they implemented requirements for farms, but there's a there's a lower limit for you have to sell this much in order for it to be implemented on your farm. Okay. Yeah, because I haven't seen any of that in the MDAR stuff. Uh, it's been, they've had some, they've had classes and things like that in the yeah. newsletters that they've been putting out. So. so Ron, if people wanted to buy some of your pickles, salsa, how would they do that? If they wanted to buy it? Yes. Uh, they could go to uh, one of the farmers markets I attend, uh, two now, four in the summer. They could go to one of 30 stores that stock our products, or they could uh, buy it online from our farm and we'd ship it to them. And they would find you online at townfarmgardens.com. Dot com. And you can go online to Central Mass Grown and you can find Ron's contact information. So Central Mass Grown website, and you can find Ron's information there as well, along with another 140 odd farms. It's in uh, Worcester County. You definitely take on some. And you were a great hit at Ag Day. Your grandmother's pickles were the hit. Well, nobody's bought any from there. I haven't had any orders from Boston lately. Well, Governor had. I, I haven't heard. I haven't seen any bakers ordering anything from us online. Next thing we'll have to help. <clears throat> we didn't have any business cards, but they asked. Where did they get the sauce and the? Pickles? It's on that label. <clears throat> Whoever took the uh, hot sauce. <laughs> they went yeah. just <laughs> the Senator took the took the hot sauce. He had had it before, Ron, and he saw your label and he scoffed up the lot. He said, do you want to take it? And I said, nope, we're not taking it home. He said, then I am. Okay. thought that was good. Are there links to the this information as far as state regulations go on the Central Mass Grown website? No, you, you'd actually go to the MDAR website, Mass Department of Agriculture. Or the... Okay. FPP, it's, it's mass.gov slash FPP, I think, Food Protection Program, and they have links to everything yeah. for all of the certifications. So if we quizzed you enough, Ron. Up to you guys. MDAR would have the uh, farm yes. regulations. Yes. Yes. I, I completely forgot the name of the regulation. No, it's GAP. No, it wasn't GAP. This is a federal. Is it the reg HACCP? No. No. It's uh, food safety. I, I don't remember. I just saw it today, okay. too. Yeah. Good stuff. Maybe we can put it in the minutes or something. I'll send you an email with it. Okay. Okay.
So then moving from this month, Cindy, what's next month? Next month, we're going to learn how to grow pumpkins with Bill Thompson. So are we inviting the school and yeah. reaching out to them as well? Or? We could do that. Anybody is welcome. Uh, local ag groups. Anybody who just wants to learn how to grow a pumpkin. And we have bags and bags of seed. Are we making our famous pumpkin pits for this? And I think that we, we may have to do that next month, right? Oh, well, Memorial Day, sure. Shouldn't we? <coughs> we should do them before the pumpkin growing <laughs> seminar so that we have them for that night. So you're going to ask your friends for compost, Ken? Sure. All right. All right. And you have pumpkin seeds. And I have plenty of seeds. I have from the gourds, the ornamental gourds, all the way to pumpkins, large pumpkins. I have seeds for everything. Okay. So they can pick and choose what they'd like to do. So join us next month and get a free pumpkin kit. Just in case uh, nobody's probably heard about it, uh, Sandy, oh, Memorial Day, oh, we're going to dedicate that bench for Joe Murray on the ridge. But we'll do the kids on Monday, right? Yeah, we should, yeah. Might be a good place. Well, there's going to be a, a Marine battalion, it's going to be an Army battalion, there's going to be a... Whole battalion? Battalion? Hey, that's what they're inviting. I'm <laughs> trying to find people. Battalion? We're looking for there's a battalion. battalion. For a battalion. <laughs> <laughs> that's 350 Marines. Well, I don't know about the soldier boys, there's probably about 700 in that. No, 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 come on. I told you, 300. We don't need as many as Marines. <laughs> You don't have to polish as much stuff. <laughs> the, bench, the bench is almost done. Okay. All the kids are here. All the kids. What we, what we are going to do, though, speaking of the bridge dedication, is the church fellowship hall will be open at 8 o'clock for coffee. And that's where the muffin thing came from, is an idea of if we can make up some muffins. And so that the, the fellowship hall will be open. There will be some sort of uh, placard or something with Joe's uh, biography there for people to read. The family have the opportunity to join us there as well before everybody goes to the bridge. So we could have uh, kits there as if we would like um, to hand out on Saturday. What did we use? A couple of bushels of, of um, material? Or we were just picking Yeah, up? yeah, but what we did was we just used a uh, small peat pot and dumped that in the bag along with packing, put, putting some seeds in a plastic bag so they didn't get uh, deteriorated. At, at the new farm up there in uh, Stepping Stone Stables, the pile is gigantic and it looks like coffee grounds. So he says, help yourself. Thank you. Yep. I'll get him, I'll get a couple of baskets. And put it. So, we yeah. gave away more than 50 kits last oh, year. Oh yes. Right. Two bushel baskets is probably not enough. All right, we'll go for three. Yeah, I've got okay. some too, so yeah. we, we can we can make that happen. Is that compost been treated by anything? No. Just years. Can you treat it? Hmm? It's been there for like eight years, this pile of it. It's um, to the old uh, stepping stone stable, it's way out back. It's like a mountain, but nothing on it. Years, be fun. So I think that that's all we have for tonight then. And Great. Uh, Ron, thanks much for joining us again. My pleasure. Bringing us up to speed. It gets complicated, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's one of those things that if we'd only known when we started. <laughs> Good experience. Exactly. And again, thank you Sharon for sharing with the community.